When it comes to your crypto wallet, you've got your seed phrase, your passphrase, your PIN and your password. And uh, it's hard enough to say, and is it any wonder that people often find themselves getting confused by these things and finding themselves in a situation where they might struggle to find their funds if they've restored their seed. They might struggle to understand uh, where their funds have gone if they've turned on a passphrase and perhaps might not know what to do if they've forgotten their PIN or if they've locked themselves out of their wallet software. I'll also do a real quick video that just runs through these four different things and how each of them are different in terms of the security they offer to your crypto wallet, uh, how important they are in terms of backups, which ones can be common across multiple devices at once, and which ones you really, really need to keep secure. This information is uh, valid for both hardware and software wallets. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop about content I make that helps you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So the first thing to understand is your seed phrase. It might be called your mnemonic, it might be called your recovery phrase, it might be 12, 15, 18, or 24 words long. And uh, generally, it's something that's going to be given to you when you first set up your wallet. When you look at your seed phrase and the words on there, what you really have is an easy to read, easy to transcribe, and easy to store version of a key that lives on your wallet. And this is sort of the main key from which all the other private keys for every coin, every currency, every account on your wallet uh, is derived from. I cover this in multiple videos, but your seed phrase is the single most important part of your wallet that you need to secure because anybody who has your 24 word seeds, if you don't have a passphrase, which we'll talk about in a second, can access all of your funds. It's something that needs to be stored offline and kept separate. Your seed phrase is compatible across multiple wallets and can even run on several at the same time. And I've done a video that looks at exactly that. And for most hardware wallets, unless you've you know, made one yourself or something like that, your seed phrase will be remembered on your hardware wallet and it will not forget it. Normally it's only when you wipe your wallet or do like a factory reset or something like that, that the seed phrase will be erased from your wallet. And uh, you know any decent wallet at all will give you all sorts of warnings uh, that if you, you know, wipe your wallet without having a backup of your seed phrase, you will lose all of your funds. Perhaps the biggest misunderstanding I see with seed phrases is that people assume that their hardware wallet is the main thing they need to secure and really it's their seed phrase. Likewise, some people will try and store their funds for long term, so they'll like try and bury one of these, when really they should be trying to bury and secure this because your hardware wallet, no matter which brand, no matter which vendor, no matter which model, it will fail one day. And it's important to have a copy of your seed phrase so you can restore that onto a new wallet and regain access to all your funds. If you're someone who's really wanting to store your crypto long term, your seed phrase is what you want to keep a copy of. And uh, there are numerous ways you can do that that'll survive the test of time, including uh, metal-based wallets, and I've done videos about those too. The other thing I should mention in terms of using your seed phrase across multiple devices is that uh, there's a thing called a derivation path. It's an important part of how your wallet knows how to derive other private keys from the main master key. And that can vary a little bit between vendors. But that said, the compatibility is much, much better now than it has been for years. So if you go to restore your seed onto a new device and can't find your funds, it could be that the derivation path of your wallet is uh, different from the one you originally were using it on. And there are websites now, and I'll put some details in the description that include information about the different derivation paths that different wallets use. The next thing I want to talk about is your passphrase. And uh, this one can be really confusing because different wallet vendors refer to it in different ways. Sometimes it'll be called a passphrase. Uh, sometimes it'll be called a 25th word. Sometimes it'll be referred to as an extension word or something like that. And uh, it's really important to say at the beginning that the vast majority of wallets, at least all the ones I've seen, don't enable a BIP39 passphrase by default. It's an advanced feature that you need to turn on. And uh, sometimes that might be even talked about as like a hidden wallet or something like that. Your passphrase is similar to a seed phrase in that it isn't uh, really vendor specific. However, the one thing you should understand is that different vendors will sometimes have different rules and limitations around how long a passphrase can be or what characters can be used in a passphrase. The other thing to understand with a passphrase is unlike your seed phrase, there is no error checking and uh, every passphrase is technically valid. What that means is if you have a typo in your passphrase, it will actually give you an entirely different wallet. The simplest way to understand how passphrases work is essentially that when you add a BIP39 passphrase, it essentially modifies the way your wallet interprets the seed. Uh, giving you an entirely new wallet for every coin, every address, all of those things are entirely new. 
What makes pass phrases really powerful is that for the same seed phrase, you can have an unlimited number of pass phrases. And what that does is create an unlimited number of different wallets. And uh, those wallets are completely independent from one another. It's almost as though you have an unlimited number of different seed phrases in your device. This is also why you can't just add a passphrase to an existing wallet without moving all your funds. And likewise, if you go to change your passphrase to a new passphrase, you will need to manually move all of the funds from the old wallet with the old passphrase to the new wallet. The thing is that while passphrases are generally compatible across vendors, uh, the way they actually behave in terms of how you enter them in, uh, whether they're stored on the device or not, does change a lot between different vendors. One of the advantages people often talk about with a passphrase is that it gives you plausible deniability. So it means that you can have the same wallet that actually links to multiple different stashes of crypto. And uh, that can be a powerful feature that some people are looking for. Adding a passphrase means that your device uh, itself is protected from key extraction attacks and there are wallets where that has been demonstrated. Perhaps the most important advantage in my mind is that adding a passphrase actually secures your paper backup itself, meaning if someone finds your paper backup, they can't just automatically take all of your funds unless they know your passphrase as well. So next we'll talk about the PIN. So your device's PIN is different from your seed phrase or your passphrase in that your PIN is something only specific to this device itself. Your PIN has nothing to do with the actual wallets or addresses that the hardware device will access in that I could put the same seed on two different hardware devices and put two different pins on them, but they would still point to the same set of accounts. All your pin does is stop someone who has access to your physical hardware device from using it. It does absolutely nothing to stop someone who has your seed phrase or seed phrase and passphrase from accessing your funds. Most hardware wallets will do things like wipe themselves after three attempts if you put in the wrong pin or take longer and longer for each attempt. That's why having your hardware wallet stolen is far, far, far less of a concern than having your seed phrase stolen. But it is important to know that your pin needs to be complex enough that someone who steals or finds your hardware wallet can't just access and steal all your funds. Something that's about six to eight digits long is much better than something really short because again, at the end of the day, unless you have a cold card, if you forget your pin, it doesn't matter. You can just wipe it and try again. And the reality is you don't really need to back your pin up. The last thing I mentioned is your wallet password. If you're using something like Ledger Live, you can actually set a password that stops someone from opening Ledger Live itself. The password for your software wallet is mostly about protecting your privacy in that, if, especially if you have a hardware wallet, if someone gets your hardware wallet and gets your PIN, they can just take it, reinstall your wallet software on their computer and access all of your funds. Again, like your PIN, your software password is something where if you forget it, it actually doesn't really matter that much in that most of the time you can just uninstall your software and just start again. You, know, you might lose your account nicknames or things like that. You might have to go re-adding all the different cryptos you have, but things like your transaction history and all that sort of stuff, they're all stored in the blockchain anyway. So they will resynchronize back. For software wallets, your password pretty much behaves like the pin on a hardware wallet in that if you forget your password, you can just recreate the wallet using the seed phrase and a passphrase if you have one and you'll be able to access all your funds. So there you go. I hope that's clarified things a little bit. And uh, the thing with crypto wallets is once you sort of get your head around how all the different pieces work together, uh, it actually can make a lot more sense and help you to understand what is going on, help you to better understand what to pay attention to in terms of your security, help you to know how to troubleshoot if you restore your wallet and can't find something, uh, and help you to know what to do if you've forgotten your PIN, if you've forgotten your password, uh, and all of these sorts of stuff. And again, most importantly of all, uh, having a clear understanding of this lets you know what to back up, what is important, what is secure, and uh, what you need to make sure no one else finds. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.